So today we will be painting these uh, orange birch bullet mushrooms. So first I'll show you uh, the materials that I'm going to use. Uh, just. So first of all, a watercolor paper. I'm using Zen Sangam's uh, artist watercolor paper, which is 60% cotton. The more the cotton uh, contains, uh, so much better the paper is. This is the paper over here. And this is the palette that I'm going to use. This is a ceramic palette. You can use any palette, a uh, plastic one or ceramic palette, but a ceramic palette is much easier to pay, uh, much easier to clean. There's another palette that I have. This is a plastic one. These are the two brushes that I'm going to use. This is Princeton One Round Brush. Uh, this is from Velvet Touch series. And this is a silver black velvet brush. So this is the shade that I'll be using for this one, for this mushroom head over here. You can use any orange that you have. And for the yellow, I'm using cadmium yellow medium from White Nights, which is something like this. So see, every uh, watercolor have different transparency and different uh, properties that I can't uh, explain everything in one session, that two in one hour, but you can always know those uh, properties over here. See, this is the pigment name. This is what, uh, this is burnt umber. So this is the pigment name. This is PBR7. And these three stars uh, denotes light fastness light fastness means the color won't fade that easily so this has three star by three stars and this shade this a tiny square uh, which is half filled it shows the opacity of the color so every brand have different way of denoting every uh, property so this has three stars uh, out of three stars daniel smith must have different uh, way of showing this so they have written pigment okay so this is pw light fastness is one so in one to three it has one and uh, so it doesn't have yeah series one series one denotes uh, like pricing if they, it is series one two three so it, it uh, denotes how expensive the paint is so there are many different uh, properties over here so there is light fastness, there is opacity. Sometimes there is staining power is also written in the tubes or even in the uh, like pans. So next shade would be a buff titanium. So this is buff titanium. So it's very light and it has a yellowish tint. So it's a beautiful color, but it can be opaque, a little bit opaque. 
so this color is very uh, good if you want to make pastel colors after out of watercolors so you can mix any color to this shade uh, to buff titanium and you will get a pastel version of that color you can see when uh, i can show you an example so this is a very vibrant orange right so See, if I mix uh, these two, then I'll get this, which is a peachy kind of a color, which can be counted as a pastel shade. Next one, this is important, a brown. So this is CP, uh, yeah, this is burnt up. If you don't have a titanium, you can always uh, dilute this shade and you'll get this one. Maybe you can use this or maybe you can add a little bit of yellow. This color looks good. This shade. You can use this shade also. This contains uh, burnt umber, this shade, plus this yellow. I have combined these yellow and diluted it, so I got this shade. So you can use this one for these initial uh, light shades of the mushroom, the stems and the lower part of the cap. So this can be the substitute for this one if you don't have the buff title. And last one can be this shade. This is paints gray. If you don't have paints gray, then you can again mix this same shade to uh, ultramarine. So I think this is my most used color, as you can see. So this is ultramarine. This is brown. See, you can get very dark shade. If you add more brown, then it will be a warm, uh, warmish black. And if you add more ultramarine, then it would be a little foolish black. So this is the color that we got. So whenever you want to get uh, a kind of a black color i'll always recommend don't ever use black it's not as good as when you mix different colors to get a black so this is a dark gray so you can use burnt sienna burnt umber to get different effects different hues and different shades of black someone asked something so this is a simple mushroom
So when sketching directly on the watercolor paper, I always use this eraser. This is an edible eraser. And uh, this eraser is very good for watercolor sheets because it, uh, because it doesn't, what should I say? It doesn't to take much pressure on the paper and the paper is like in good condition even after erasing a lot because mostly when we use different eraser, so can be ruined. So this is very good alternative to the normal eraser. I think this is it. And you can always lighten up your sketch like this. So let's start. And start with the orange. Orange cap. Very light. We just uh, want where we want the orange and where we want the yellows, and then we will add on layers. Don't put the darkest layer first because in watercolors you can go from lighter to dark, but you can't go back. You can't uh, make lighter because you can't add white in watercolors. Huh? It's different from acrylics or oils, so you have to start from the lighter layers. So this is very light. I'm just adding the first layer to see where the all colors would be. And, then, and I'm cleaning my brush, tapping on the uh, tissue over here, and then just blending this color like this. Because I want to add yellow over here in the center. But for now, orange on this side. So this uh, was already wet, so it is blending out perfectly. But earlier it was not uh, wet. So. If, it, if it's not perfect, that, uh, and then it's also all right, because we would be adding more layers over it, and then it would look much better. So a little bit of yellow. So the first layer is done. So till this dries, maybe I can work on the stem because I can't work over here. It can bleed. These two layer, these two areas can bleed. So I, I will not be working over here. I would be working on this stem because I have to wait uh, till this cap dries. So I'm using the buff titanium. Uh, this stage now, so it's uh, totally fine because it's very light. Maybe we can fix it later, but if it's a dark layer, uh, then the changes are very difficult. Because in watercolors, mostly you have only few seconds to correct your mistakes. So this is the very light shade that I've used. See, this one for the stem. Oh, I forgot to mention one thing. You can always test your colors first. Like, see, this paper, this is a rough paper. So this was uh, only for light shade, so it doesn't matter much, but later on, you can always test your colors first. When you're mixing, two or three colors, you don't know the outcome is. So you should always test it. Like, is this better or this better? So you'll figure out and then only work on your main sheet. Okay? Just blending everything out. So, so 
This is Payne's gray. This is Gaunt. Humber. This is Buff. Titanium. This is Cadmium Yellow. Medium. And this is Pyrrol Orange. Transparent Pyrrol Orange. So this one is from Daniel Smith. This one is from White Knights. This is again from Daniel Smith. This is from White Knights. And this is also from White Knights. This gray is a mixture of uh, burnt tumble plus ultramarine. Both from White Knights. And this shade is one tumble plus cadmium yellow, but it's very diluted, okay? So this must have dried up to now and I, I can add a layer over here or even here. So again, I'm using buff titanium. So this is very light, okay? Sometimes you can't even see that I'm painting anything. still dried so i have to blend it out i thought the color is still wet you don't need harsh lines over here you want everything to be like perfectly blended together so i'm wetting this uh, area again and then i'm using burnt umber like this so this is the ugly stage of the mushroom. So maybe I can add layers over here because this is still wet, so I can't touch this because these two will blend together then. So I'm not using paints gray. I'm using this shade okay? because ultramarine is available in all sets. So I'm using this color. Burnt Umber plus Ultramarine. This is the mixture that I made. Oh. Oh, my buff titanium heat. So I'm testing out this gray color because I don't want a very dark shade. So this is too dark for me. This is fine. Cleaning up, uh, cleaning up my brush and blending these edges. I thought this layer uh, would have dried by now, but see, this is not dried. So you should wait till the layers are dried. So I'm trying to blend this out. I'll fix this later.
think uh, this time is almost done. We just need to add these tiny details over here that we would do it later. So I'm not sure if this is tried. I think I'll wait for a minute. I don't want to like blend these two together like I did before. I think it should be dried by now. Do this. This is way too dark. This is too dark. But I'll blend this together. Put a point in this here. Watercolors always dry lighter. Okay, if this is very dark compared to this one, it will dry a little bit light than it is visible right now. So Orange over here. Like this. Then cleaning up my brush and blending this. Adding more yellow in the center. It doesn't need to be like uh, pure yellow. You can blend it with a little bit orange also. There should not be any specific line. Okay, there should not be any harsh line over here. See, there is no line here or even here. So this layer is done. And then I think I should use my another brush. Where is that? The Cranston one. Yeah. This one. You can use any size zero or size one brush. Actually, this brush can also work because this has a very good point. Even though it's a size six brush, then also the point is really good. So 
So let's I think I should use a different brown for this one. Maybe mix that brown with more ultramarine, get a darker shade like this one. So I'll get this shade somewhere. This is darker than this, but lighter than this. So I'm using this shade. This is still wet. I'm not sure why it's not drying. I think I should wait. So till this dry, I can use a little bit of uh, the same orange plus brown, the burnt umber, or the shadows. Don't uh, add the whole outline over here, okay? Just leave some parts. You can add that uh, kind of outline on the lower part, but not on the top. The whole top should not be covered with outline. I like this one. And then again, this shade or adding shadows over here. Cleaning up my brush and blending this color like this. Again, I'm using uh, mixed with ultramarine, which has more burnt umber and less ultramarine. And a little bit of shadow. On the top. Just remember that uh, some white is visible. Okay, don't add the brown on the whole lower part. That won't look good. See in this also, I have added the shadows beneath this line over here. This portion st is still a little bit of white. So we have to make that visible over here. Like this, I think this should be fine. Just 
sometimes i uh, when i make a mistake uh, and i have to correct it usually in watercolors we have a few seconds to correct it so see this portion is a little tiny mistake i don't think i can fix it now because uh, it's totally dried up but i usually use this brush this is princeton velvet touch so this is a tiny uh, chisel blender this is not a flat brush this is a chisel blender so uh, in watercolors we have this brush called eradicator brush uh, i have seen that brush in rosemary so i use this brush instead of that brush i just use this like that clean up my brush and just rub it over here i don't think it will uh, fix it Yeah, it's too late. I can't fix it now. So never mind. So let's move on to this part. Forgot to like clean up that. Oh yeah. Just remember, whenever you make a mistake, try to fix it in a few seconds. Otherwise, it would be difficult to like remove that color. It uh, the removing of this color it depends upon the pigment and the paper. Some paper you can uh, like remove the pigment very easily, and in some uh, colors, if it's highly, uh, it's called staining. Yeah, the staining property of a color. If it's a staining color. then uh, the lifting of the color would be difficult but if it's not staining then lifting of the color is very easy you, you must have seen many artists like uh, putting the a layer of color over here and then just using a clean brush to lift off the color like in the veins on leaves or anything like that to like lift off the color from the sky to make the clouds so if you are using a staining color uh, give you an example of staining color like a thalo blue so it it becomes difficult to lift off that color so i don't remember this is a staining color or not uh the pearl orange so these are all properties of any color you can like learn about it uh in the tube tube or uh, pan as well it's everything is written over there if it's not you can always google uh, and look up their website and it will show if the color is staining if the color is transparent what is the pigment's name what is the light fastness some few important aspect of any color is light fastness because it determines the length like uh, the duration the painting will last and some properties like staining so we can know how to use that color efficiently so this is the same this uh, brown okay the burnt umber and ultramarine which has more burnt umber and less ultramarine just make irregular shapes okay don't make uh, these tiny circles over everywhere it should be very different from each other irregular so it will look natural like this the top part should be darker the lower we go it will be lighter think this is enough maybe we can add a little bit of this uh, grayish overlay this 
So let's just do that. Now for the bottom soil part, I'm again using the same colors because I don't want to like use too much color in a tiny mushroom. So it's easier to use it in minimum color palette. And that way we learn a lot as well because using this single color, we made up so many colors. Like we made this shade, we made this shade, we even made this shade using only just this color. So it also teaches color mixing. So always try to use less colors. Sometimes you can use a, a large variety of colors, but you should always try to use sometimes. Just like this. And while it's still wet, I'm adding this dark color somewhere like this. So I just have to make these line, lines visible a, a bit because I added a second layer and that blended the lines that I added earlier. So I'll just wait a few minutes. Okay, like a warm red. I'm just adding some finishing touches. Otherwise, this mushroom is done. See. Uh, earlier when the color was wet, it was much, much darker than this one. It's still darker, but it's not that dark uh, when it was uh, wet. So I think this is done. If you have any questions or you want to show your work, you can message me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is mandisem underscore r. And you can tag me and Zen Sangam on your post. So I can see your posts. And if you have any questions, I would love to help you guys. So I think I'll conclude this session right now. Thank you for joining.